This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. So, Iran has had a very interesting week. The head of the Quds Force and the IRGC was found by U.S. intelligence operations, and they gave him a bomb, just like the many which he arranged to be given to others over the past few decades. Iran also launched about 16 missiles with very limited effect in response to the U.S. attack, and then got jumpy about being bombed in return. Iran, who has been interfering with regional politics in the Middle East throughout my entire life, has had a really, really bad week. Let's talk about that, shall we? And while we're at it, we can cover what all of these incidents tell us about why Iran is so eager to avoid a war with the U.S. after all of these years of animosity. Let's start by talking about Qasim Soleimani. He was in command of the IRGC and the Quds Force, which effectively made him the most powerful man in Iran. All of the asymmetrical operations which Iran supported over the last couple decades were his operations, which made him one of the most influential men in the Middle East. All of that, and yet he managed to remain mostly behind the scenes and out of the limelight. So... When he showed up in Baghdad just in time for the siege of the U.S. Embassy, the Pentagon asked the president if he wanted for them to take the shot, and President Trump told them to do it. No more Soleimani, and good riddance. So here's the position the government of Iran finds themselves in. They have to take revenge for such a killing in order to maintain their power over the Iranian populace. But the guy who was in charge of planning and executing such a revenge attack is the same guy who must now be avenged. So what to do? Iran could declare war, they could launch numerous punitive strikes, or they could risk losing control of their population and possibly their country. Iran has some short-range ballistic missiles, though. Sixteen of those were launched at two bases in Iraq. Only twelve actually hit those bases, making some bomb craters, knocking down a few tents, and damaging a helicopter, but not actually hurting anyone. Meanwhile, back in Tehran, an air defense unit located close to the main airport in the city identified a possible air raid coming in. They tracked the lone bomber and launched, and shot down a Ukrainian airline with over 170 people on board. None of them survived the attack. Iran declared that they had killed tens of soldiers in the missile strike on those two bases. Iran also claimed that the airline crashed due to mechanical failure. Information collected by the Western nations, particularly the United States, proved otherwise in both cases. And eventually, Iran admitted their unintentional attack on the Ukrainian plane which had just lifted off from the airport which the air defense unit was guarding. The volcanic hisses of the air being let out of the hundreds of reports that stated that Trump had just started World War III is still echoing all over the world. There are reports that Iran used back-channel communications to warn the U.S. that the missile strikes were inbound. The successor to Soleimani is claiming that revenge has only just begun, but the Iranian foreign minister has declared revenge to be achieved. Hmm, an interesting picture has formed. Bear with me while I explain it. Iran hasn't fought a significant war since the Iran-Iraq war ended in 1988. Now that's important because in that war, Iran and Iraq fought each other to a standstill. And yet Saddam Hussein's highly experienced, extensively equipped army took just six months to be nearly completely destroyed to the last and least by a U.S.-led coalition. And of those six months, about six weeks were invested in active offensive operations against Iraq. Iran watched again 10 years later when Afghanistan was occupied by another U.S.-led coalition before December 2001, just weeks after the 9-11 attacks. Only the Taliban insurgency supported by Soleimani served as a significant resistance. By 2003, the United States opened up a second war with Iraq, this time to remove Saddam Hussein from power for all time. The invasion of Iraq in 2003 took about six weeks, too. For Iran, a chilling picture had emerged. Only Soleimani's efforts were working in the region. 
The U.S.-led coalition forces were just too capable and experienced at making war to be defeated conventionally. Now, the U.S. noticed that Iran was supporting insurgencies from Africa to the Khyber Pass, and they noticed that Iran was producing weapons-grade radioactive materials. Instead of going to war with yet another country, though, the U.S. slapped a strict embargo on most trade with Iran, and most of the rest of the world joined in. Now, let's fast forward to 2020, folks. The Iranian economy is in a shambles. The Iranian population is demonstrating actively because of economic pressures and shortages. The U.S. kills Soleimani. Iran's revenge attack isn't very effective, and there are only four possible explanations for this. Either the missiles used were not up to the job, the troops maintaining and launching them were poorly trained, Iran always intended for the missiles to miss, or some combination of all three. When we add in the misidentification and destruction of a Boeing 737 civilian passenger jet, which had just taken off from the main airport in Tehran, the second possibility can be projected onto the rest of the Iranian military, too. And why? Because if Iran meant to shoot down that plane, then Iran would have either claimed the kill or found a more plausible explanation than mechanical failure. Instead, they hid the intercept as well as they could manage, up to and including bulldozing the crash site, until presented with incontrovertible proof from U.S. intelligence sources. Iran is in a very bad position at the moment. They have no weapons of mass destruction which can be employed effectively against the United States or even used to keep the United States from invading them. Their conventional military is likely not up to the challenge of facing down the U.S. military forces, which are currently the best trained, best equipped, and most battle-hardened formations in the world. So much for World War III, then. Iran knows what a tenuous position it occupies at the moment and isn't looking for war. That will likely further weaken the power of the mullahs. I hope that it spells the end of the theocracy in Iran. I really do.